You're very welcome to this online service, whether you're joining us from near or from far. This is, of course, the first Sunday in the season of Lent. And in our service this morning, coming to you from Queen's Park Govan Hill Parish Church, our service reflects this first Sunday of Lent, the prayers, and to some extent the very mood of our worship fits with this season of preparation and of journey and of personal reflection and review of our lives. Let me remind you that in partnership with Campsie Parish Church and their minister Jane Denniston, we are offering Lenten reflections on the Congregational webpage and Facebook page and YouTube channel and these are published at 10am every Wednesday and every Friday through the season of Lent up until Holy Week. And remember too that on this Tuesday evening at 7pm, though with the first of our monthly chat and share online get-togethers, the details of the Zoom link for this are in the weekly email update as also on the news pages of the church website. Or they can be obtained by getting in touch with me. You just click on this link and turn up with a cuppa and ready to chat. Stay as long as you like or as long as you are able. Today, on this first Sunday of Lent, we hear how Jesus was led into the wilderness and was tempted, following on from his baptism, tested by Satan for 40 days. Let us then begin by sharing with one another the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Let us worship God together.
because Jesus himself has passed through the test of suffering, he is able to help those who are in the midst of their test. Let us pray. Liberating God, we praise you this day for that great gift of your mercy, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through his sacrificial life and love, we have been released from enslavement to sin and death. As we begin this season of Lent, so with deep gratitude we recall the beginning of his journey towards death for him, but towards the gift of life for us. May praise and adoration for such love be forever on our lips and in our hearts. Glorious God, your thoughts are not our thoughts, neither are your ways our ways. You look at the ugliest soul and see still unstirred the wings of an angel. We scan the finest of our neighbours, anxious to find a flaw. You view time in the context of eternity and so find a place for waiting for yearning, even for suffering, even for dying. We demand instant results and look for tomorrow before savouring today. You know that only one who suffers can ultimately save. That is why you walk the way of the cross. We fear that vulnerability which defies our power, that is why we allow for crucifixion. Your thoughts are not our thoughts, neither are your ways our ways, and yet we know that your way is the ladder to heaven, while left to our own devices our ways slope downward to hell. But we are here, not to have our worst confirmed, but to have our best liberated. So we pray, forgive in us what has gone wrong. Repair in us what is wasted. Reveal in us what is good. Hear now our own silent confession of sins. Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring us to God. Through the mercy of Christ, God remembers you, but not your faults or your sins. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. Loving God, in this holy season of Lent, as we journey with our Lord to the cross, give us discernment that we may know in our lives what we must lay down and what we must take up what we must end and what we must begin. Give us wisdom to recognise the dark reality behind each subtle temptation. Give us courage in the face of all that is hellishly attractive, that we may choose your way and will. Give us grace to lead a disciplined life in glad obedience and with the joy which comes from a closer walk with Christ. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose words we further pray, saying... Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Good morning Pathfinders, I hope you are all well. This week marked the start of Lent and Lent is the run up to Easter and the closer we get to Easter the more our minds turn towards the cross. Now in the past few weeks the moderator for the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland has set out a photography competition and it's called Hidden in Plain Sight 
Now when we think of a cross, you think of the crosses that hang on the wall in church, or you think of the crosses that maybe some people wear as jewellery. But do you ever see a cross outside the church building? Maybe you see it when you're at the park, or maybe there's one in your house, or maybe there's one elsewhere. So that's what this photography competition is. What he wants you to do is he wants you to see the hidden crosses in your everyday life. It could be in an urban setting, like in a park, or it could be on your street, or it could be in your own back garden. And that's what I would like you to do this week. That is your challenge for this week, is you need to go out or stay in, it's up to you, and see if you can find the hidden crosses in everyday life. Now Callum and I decided to have a little shot at this photography competition as well. We went to Strathclyde Park and had a look around and we found some crosses around the park. We found one in the trees where these branches overlapped to make a cross. We found a cross, a very faint cross, in the ice on the pond. And we found a cross on a building. So we had fun while we were out and about as well. And that's the important thing, as long as you just have fun. Now, stay safe and we'll see you again next week. Today's reading is from Mark chapter 1, reading from verse 9. At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert for forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. For the reading from God's holy word, Thanks be to God.
Gospel we read, the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. Here is a possibly unwelcome, even unpleasant and often unrecognised truth. God deals with us in the wilderness. Now that may not be something that we welcome, but I think that we can see from so many incidents in the scriptures, from the lives of so many of the great Christian saints down through the centuries, and even in our own experience that there is a truth in it. God deals with us in the wilderness. We need only think of the long journey of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai, 40 long years to see that God deals with us in the wilderness. According to Exodus in the Old Testament, this 40-year-long march from Egypt to the Promised Land was full of difficulty and privation and of fear, doubt, complaint. And far from being delighted at their liberation from slavery in Egypt, the Israelites often turned to blame and despair. They soon were wishing that they could return to the Egypt that they had been so desperate to escape. As someone has pointed out, and as I think I may have said to you before, it did not take 40 years to deliver the people of Israel out of Egypt. It took 40 years to deliver Egypt out of the people of Israel. Sometimes people have to take a long journey through transition before they can be transformed into the people who are ready for the promised land. God deals with us in the wilderness. Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness is an echo of the 40 years in the wilderness that the Israelites endured. Jesus had just been baptised by John, affirmed by God his Father and anointed by the Spirit for his ministry. And the first thing that the Holy Spirit does is drive Jesus out into the wilderness. There is sometimes a need to travel to and through the wilderness, whether that is the darkness of our own experiences, the desert of this pandemic time, the difficulties we have gone through as a congregation, or whatever we may have had to endure or be enduring or may yet endure in our own lives. God deals with us in the wilderness. As he journeys from the waters of the Jordan to the wilderness of Judea, Jesus is taking a journey and is continuing a journey, his epic journey of deep commitment and costly suffering. This journey, you recall, has taken him from heaven to earth, out of love for us. It is a journey that is marked from beginning to end by submission, suffering and self-offering. And as his journey moves towards its climax, these are the themes that begin to dominate. I think that we should understand the 40 days in the wilderness more about testing than about temptation. Because I don't think temptation is the primary theme. It is the testing of Jesus. And while that part certainly involved him in facing up to the devil and temptation, it's also about testing in the sense of, of preparation, the preparation of Jesus for his ministry in terms of sorting out priorities, his focus, motives, commitment. To see the wilderness experience of Jesus simply in terms of a series of temptations is actually really a rather surface reading of the story. What is at stake in the testing of Jesus has more to do with his identity, with what it means to be God's representative on earth, with what is the nature of faithfulness to God. The question at stake is what sort of son of God is Jesus? What sort of action will his identity require? The wilderness was an essential part of the journey of Jesus, as indeed 
the wilderness had been such an essential part of the journey of the Israelites so many generations beforehand. For God deals with us in the wilderness. During the 40 days of Lent on which we have now embarked, we recall and reflect the 40 days of Jesus when he was in the wilderness. And we recall and reflect upon the 40 years that the people of Israel spent in the wilderness. Our little fastings, our simple self-denials during Lent, as well as being signs and even means of deeper spiritual preparation, are also signs of our identification with Jesus in his 40 days of fasting in the wilderness and with the Israelites' 40 years of wandering in the desert. Anything that we might decide to give up for Lent, any chosen self-denial, is a reflection of and a reminder that, as was the case for Jesus and for the Israelites, it is often in these times of wilderness and desert and privation and difficulty, the apparent times of emptiness, that God effects his greatest and deepest work within us. God deals with us in the wilderness. But it does not always happen quickly. The wilderness can be long indeed. Forty years for the Israelites. Forty hard years. Well, after all, no one said that this business of following God was necessarily always going to be easy. And for Jesus, it clearly involved a deep and significant commitment and a costly suffering. Jesus' journey amongst us was characterised, as I said, from beginning to end by submission, suffering and self-sacrifice. And all of this was for us. And all of it was born out of his boundless love. As we continue on our ongoing journey of faith, following him, we may often find ourselves in wilderness and desert places. We may feel that we're in one right now for so many reasons. And these wilderness times do not always pass quickly. And certainly this pandemic season, with all its restrictions, frustrations, difficulties and losses, feels like it is going on rather. The wilderness journey can sometimes be long. But God deals with us in the wilderness. As I said earlier, this congregation of ours has in some ways been through a time of wilderness too, even although it, is not, it has not been easy to progress the aims and objectives of this interim ministry period through these lockdown days. Nonetheless, I hope that we will feel that God is dealing and will deal with us in positive and powerful ways for our good and to heal hearts and wounds and relationships and to set us on a course for the future as we pass through and beyond our wilderness time. Of course, we're not yet out of the wilderness. The scenery may eventually change, but the journey ahead may remain quite tough for us. And beyond my time with you may remain tough. But that does not mean that the journey is not meaningful or meant. That it cannot be preparing us and be positive for us. Not at all. For God deals with us in the wilderness. We learn and can grow greatly and be prepared significantly as we travel through such a wilderness. The children of Israel were transformed and saved in the wilderness. Jesus was tested and strengthened in the wilderness. 
the desert was for them a time of preparation and that can be the case for us too. In the wildernesses or deserts of life we encounter, may it not be that God is at work in us by his Holy Spirit preparing us and proving us, testing us and transforming us, strengthening us and saving us. And we most certainly can affirm that in whatever wilderness we may face, there is one who has promised to be with us, who has gone that way before us, and who will meet with us in the wilderness. There is nothing that we will ever face or encounter that Jesus has not also faced when he journeyed with us. We may travel through deserts, but he has been there. We may endure hard testing, but he has endured that too. We may experience great suffering, but he too has touched the very depths of suffering. Whatever wilderness experience we might face, we do so in the company of one who has walked the road before us, who has walked the road for us, and who now walks the road with us. No matter how barren the wilderness through which we have to journey, no matter how meagre the provisions we seem to have, no matter how alluring the temptations with which we are assailed, no matter how hard the testing with which we are afflicted, he is with us and can and will use the wilderness as a time and a place for testing and transformation. You may wish to reflect during this time of Lent on how Jesus has been with us in the wilderness and consider what we may have learned as God has been dealing with us. For God promises to be with us and God deals with us in the wilderness. Amen. And now, a reflective prayer, which is a short song response in which we can all join, which goes, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, which is simply the Greek for, Lord have mercy. So let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to you because you were tempted like us in all things, yet did not submit. Because you have promised to come to the help of those who in every age are put to the test. And because we are not exempt from the subtle attraction of what is wrong and what is evil. Therefore, we pray to you. <laughs> We call you to where in our lives we exploit our abilities purely for personal gain and let the human gifts which were meant to illuminate the world light up no more than our own vanity. <laughs> We call you to where in our lives we have made a show of our religion and made faith a means of attracting to us at the cost of distracting from you. 
To where in our lives another God more to our liking is the object of our fawning, the recipient of our time, of our attention, of our worship. It is in these places in our lives that we threaten to desert you, the one who has chosen us, and who in the wilderness, at the temple and on the mountain top, showed there was a better way. So we turn from our seeking after selfish comfort. We turn from our inclination to false piety. We turn from our preference for petty loyalties. From these we avert our gaze turning our faces towards you, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for always being there for us, even when we think we are all alone. As we meet today, the first Sunday in Lent, we remember the great sacrifice your Son made on our behalf at Easter. Help us to try and live our lives as he would like us to do and treat others as we would like to be treated. As we bring our prayers for others, we would ask you to be with the families who have lost loved ones due to the pandemic, those who are finding it difficult to cope being isolated and not able to meet family and friends, those who are struggling financially who do not know if they will be able to keep their businesses going and keep on their staff. We pray for all the NHS staff who are still working tirelessly to help contain the outbreak. Now that the scientists have found a vaccine, we hope that it will not be too long before the disease is brought under control. We pray for all people suffering from the effects of the fighting still going on in many parts of the world for those suffering from the aftermath of natural disasters and for all Christians still being persecuted for their faith. We thank you for our Minister David, for all the work he has done and is doing to bring us together at this difficult time. We thank you that with the help of modern technology and the hard work done by members of our congregation, we are able to be part of the services each Sunday also with other groups such as Bible study, choir and Kirk session. Be with all our congregation and help us to behave responsibly to keep ourselves and others safe and well. All these prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Go now and give yourselves to God, even when you are led into difficult and testing places. Strengthen yourselves against the ways of the tempter, and may God enfold you in tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside you in times of struggle, and may the Spirit guide you back to the path whenever you stray. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.